I did wonder if maybe this was something that I could die from. I, I said, you know, just in case, uh, I want to I want to pass on my last words to you and the kids. So if I can clear away some of the mental battles and spiritual battles that you might have as a result of my death, I, I wanted to make that easy for them uh, to know that their dad and their husband was dying. Uh, very grateful for the life that he had been given. My heart just felt like it was breaking at one minute, but the next minute I just felt this overwhelming sense of love and thankfulness to the Lord because I left that conversation knowing that first and foremost my husband loved the Lord and second that he loved the kids and I. A nurse came from around um, Michael's bed and put her arm around me and prayed with me. Sorry. And I thought it just that moment changed for me kind of the trajectory of how I viewed the rest of the events that happened. My way back to the emergency room when I was under, gonna undergo surgery, my, my last thing that I really consciously remember doing is praying and asking the Lord if he would, if he would spare my life. Um, uh, for my wife, I didn't want her to be alone. And for my kids, there's many things that I still wanted to you know, be a part of their life in. And so that was really the last conscious thought that I had before I underwent um, the anesthesia and everything picked a seat right near the doors going back to the engine. So every time they opened, my heart would stop. But around about 10 and a half hours, Dr. Pavlina came up and he sat down with us and explained that the surgery went well and that Michael did remarkably well and kind of gave us an overview. And I think then a little bit of the gravity of the situation hit me more than when I was sitting there waiting because I still hadn't grasped fully what a dissected aorta was or what, you know, an aneurysm. There was so much we didn't know. And so when I saw him lying there and I could see the top of um, where the incision was, I was like, oh my. When I woke up, I, I was just full of gratitude and thankfulness that the Lord had answered that prayer and given me more time that definitely extends to the to the medical professionals uh, everybody involved whether it was from the first emergency room that we went to in the ambulance kettering medical to the surgeons and the, the medical professionals there and then to the care team that was uh, providing for my daily needs and and helping me recover one of the first things that the that the uh, the surgeon asked me after surgery, he said, you know, what do you do for a living? And I told him, and um, he kind of thought about it for a few minutes, and then he said, you know, I think you'll probably be able to get back to teaching in the fall. And I was, I was blown away with that because I didn't feel like I would be able to do that. And I think that that was a great motivator for me. It, it kind of dangled that carrot of motivation that here's something to work for, you know, here's something to, to do your rehab and to take your meds and to think about uh, these things that the doctors have asked you to, to change and, and um, be ready for in, in your recovery. This is a gift that I've been given, and so I, I do want to invest it well. I want to use it well. So in that sense, it's maybe helped to sharpen some of those previous goals that I've had and, and a desire to make use of whatever remaining years I have left. <laughs>